Okay, guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan. Huge honor for me. Guys, Gordon uh, is showing his next instructional video all about body lock pass. And it's actually one of my favorite ones to watch because uh, every time I see him competing, he always gets the body lock. And once he gets there, his opponent is done. So super excited to learn, Gordon. Let's do it. Yeah, so in the first passing instructional, we covered some body locks, but it was more about just the general idea of the full passing system. And now we're gonna go into a body lock specific study. Um, so it's gonna be around 12 hours uh, total with rolling and commentary plus technique. Um, and it's based around three simple ideas of stuffing, shelving, and splitting the legs, okay? So what this means is, if I go in and I lock a body lock, I can play a game where I either shelf Bernardo's legs on mine, like so, that his legs are shelved on mine, whether it be with a front or a side body lock. We can play a game where we stuff Bernardo's leg into a half guard, where we body lock him, we step over a leg, and then we force him into a half guard, where now we can play from the half guard or pass our partner's top leg. Okay, the great, one of the great utilities of using body lock passing is that it gets you past the annoying top leg in a half guard. Okay, whereas if I was just pushed him into half guard, now I have to get past his knee shield and his arm. If I can use a body lock to step over into half guard, now I'm past all of his frames, okay? Um, so we can stuff the leg and step over into half guard. So we can shelf the leg, we can stuff the leg, and we can also split the legs, either with one of my legs, where I use a sprawling method, for example, and I sprawl past one of Bernardo's butterfly hooks, so now I split the legs with my two legs, or with my one leg, or, this is the best, I can use a double split method where I take an elbow inside, and I can't, maybe I can't step over into half guard, Bernardo's stopping me, he has his knee up high, and I feel like I just can't get into half guard. I can double split the legs, where now from here, two of my legs split Bernardo's legs. Man, now, when he goes to, now when he goes to keep his guard, there's just nothing he can do. It's a pretty easy thing to start passing or stepping over into half guard. So it's going to be based around these three simple ideas. We can sh a shelf the leg, we can stuff the leg into a half guard, or we can split the leg with either one or two of our legs. So that's the general idea. So shelf, staff, or split? Yes. Yeah, oh Gordon, yesterday uh, when we were together, me, you, Chinoku, and Berigani, they were asking you questions about the body lock, and you have answered for every single yeah. like <laughs> aspect. That can you just do some like, uh, if I do this, what you're gonna do? If I yeah. do that, what you're gonna do? Just so they can understand like how much of a system it is. And like, uh -huh. I was really impressed when I watched it because it's not like, oh, do this and you're gonna get that result. You cover every single weave that can happen around the body lock, right? So, what what are the most popular ones there that you think like? Uh... So, so one of the biggest things is um, if I flatten Bernardo out, he will always try to be looking to forward shift and sit me up, and then go into some kind of off balance where he gets my head to the floor and goes sumigashi. So, you're talking about one of the big things we're looking at in this instructional, and one of the big things we were looking at yesterday is a conversion from a front body lock into a side body lock. Okay, um, when you look at people talking about about body lock passing, normally what they always reference is front body locks, where Bernardo has two of his hooks inside and two of his knees around me. But the best body lock of all is a side body lock, and we can convert from a front body lock, where Bernardo goes to forward shift me, and I can take the leg Man, by, and I can convert to a side body lock. Where now from here we go in and we start locking our hands. And we can pass it side body locks as well as front body locks. Another thing we're looking at is to erase the arbitrary line between open and closed hands. Normally, when people teach body locks, it's either you're a body lock passer or you're a tight waist passer. And if you lock your hands, you're taught to lock your hands and never let go until you pass. But this is, this is the wrong idea. Right here, if Bernardo tries hard to stay up on his right hand, it's hard for me to actually pass his guard from here. I can't put his back on the floor. So I play a game where I switch between, and this is from front body locks and side body locks all together. I, I switch between locked hands and unlocked hands to start going in and flattening Bernardo out. Yep. Or switching if I can't get, if I can't step over Bernardo's knee, for example, from a front body lock, I can use a tight waist, I can unlock my hands, I can go in, I can step over the legs, or I can relock the hands with an inside elbow. There's a ton of different things I can do where I can start with locked hands then unlock them or start with unlocked hands and then go in and lock them. And there's no reason why you can't flow between locked and unlocked as you go through these passes.
Got it. Oh, go ahead. Two more questions. So one, uh, you have a whole sequence as well if they turn backwards to you, right? Because you sometimes you pass the guard from the body lock, sometimes you take them back. You yeah, take them yeah. back, right? So, so, yeah. so normally, whenever I go in and I either want, usually it happens off side body locks where I go here and Bernardo knows if he faces me, he's going to get pinned. So what happens is he starts to tr turning away into turtle position. And now my whole thing from here is just negate his movement to make Bernardo less athletic than I am. What I don't want is to try to make myself more athletic than Bernardo and chase the head and come up. And then we and a scramble ensues and he maybe gets away from me. So I want to make Bernardo less athletic than I am by putting in a deep tight waist and putting my ear on his back. And now I just hang off Bernardo's body. When he goes to get up and get away from me, it's a very labored movement. He can do it, but he has to start scissoring his legs. And as he does that, he scissors, scissors, he's carrying my body weight now. And as he comes up, Man, that's incredible. I can insert one hook, I can go into my power half attacking turtle series, and then we can break him down and then eventually insert our second hook. So our whole thing is we play a dilemma between pinning a guy if they face us and taking their back if they turn away. Got it. And we're the last question. This is kind of like a personal question. Regarding the body lock itself, how do you do the grip? Pretend that if you can do here the shadow, for example. Yeah. Pretend there is a UK over here or, or I do whatever. Yeah. So normally, this is going to depend on a couple things. Number one, the length of your arms relative to the thickness of your partner's waist. Okay. If you think about the gripping series, there's a couple different grips that we can make. They can make 10 finger, they can make palm to palm, they can make wrist to wrist, and we can do a full figure of four. A full figure of four is obviously the smallest circle, but not applicable here because you're never going to be able to figure four someone's waist. Well, as you're fighting against the rooster. So. Yes. <laughs> so, so in general, what I generally recommend is the tighter circle you can form, the better. So for me, because I have long arms, I generally figure, I generally favor full wrist to wrist grips where we pull our partner into us. Now, if I'm fighting in ultra heavyweight divisions and everyone's very big, I may have to go with palm to palm or 10 finger grips. Okay. But the smaller the circle, the better. The tighter the lock, the better. If you can lock wrist to wrist, this is always a better grip than locking 10 finger, provided you want to keep your hands in the center. If you want to start moving your hands from side to side, then it's an easier thing, then it's easier with a, with a bigger circle. And how do you do like Sometimes when I'm playing with body lock, it's not my style, but just to learn, I always squeeze my fingers and kind of hurts. And then I was like, hey, yes, yeah. I this right? Well, all you do with that. This is this is a, a good uh, this is the, a good question. So John talks about this. If you have uh, bad wrists or you have bad hands or and I do like you and, you, and you have injuries, yeah, uh, no, you can switch your hand position. So if right here I go in and I put my left hand on top. Okay. And I'm looking, to, I'm looking towards your left side. This is going to put pressure over my left wrist. Okay. So generally, I switch my hands and I put my right hand on top. So now when I go to take you over, there's not nearly as much pressure on my wrist. Okay. So you can switch your hands from top to bottom so, depending on which side you're looking so to. So you put the not injured wrist on bottom? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then that makes it makes it much easier on your wrist. John has the same problem. He always talks about his wrist injuries. If you have wrist or finger injuries, you just switch your grip and you protect the wrist that's hurt. Okay. Uh, I got it. So if this one is the injured one, I should do either this. And even if I do the four fingers, I'm still putting this one on the bottom. Yeah. So or if this, if, or if, this, if, if you feel it's a very this. it's very difficult and you feel like that's just not working, then I generally recommend tight waist passing, where now there's no pressure on your wrist and you have a deep just, you have a deep tight waist instead. And you use unlocked hands and you use an elbow inside. So now there's no weight on the wrist. And you can. So you it's can the same mechanics, but it's a different grip. Yeah. I got it. Another thing that's, that's pretty cool that we're going to be looking at um, is the integration of the leg palm link series, the float passing that we looked at from the first passing instructional, but now with body locks. Where, for example, we've all been in body lock situations where we're trying to step over our partner's leg to force half guard, but we find ourselves in a situation where they're posting on the knees and we just can't step over into half guard. It's hard to pommel when you have weight over your legs. And when you use a low hip method of body locking, it's a pretty easy thing for your partner, uh, for your partner to stop you pommeling. But when you use a high tripod method of body locking, whether you have locked or unlocked hands, it's a pretty hard thing for your partner to stop you pommeling your legs because of the fact that you have weightless legs. So I do a thing where I either keep my hands locked or my personal favorite is I jump up to an underhook like so, either double underhook or over under. And I play a game where I start with a body lock and I feel like I can't pummel my legs. And then I move to a situation 
where I'm in a high tripod. Right, so now, when Bernardo goes to lift me, it's a difficult thing. Yep. When he goes to take his legs out to lock close guard, he can only take one leg out, and when that happens, I can always pump the leg to the inside. Yeah. And now from here, if he keeps two butterfly hooks in, now I have a free hand, the post, and I can start knee sliding. Man, that's incredible. I can start playing a game where I go into top pommels. I can start playing a game where I go into front pommels. And I can pommel my legs because of the fact that they're weightless. And it's a pretty easy thing to pommel past the hooks when I use high tripod variations of body locking. So this is almost like integrating like body lock pass with the pommel sequence. Yes, that you're, yes. Man, that's incredible. Yeah, so Gordon, just to summarize everything here, so you stop, you start everything picking which method you're gonna use, either the shelving, the staff, or the split, or the split. Yeah, and then from each method, there is a sequence, and you can go back and forth exactly. between methods as well. Exactly. Usually, I test guys. But well, the more basic the opponent, the more basic moves you have to use. Yep. So normally, it's a pretty easy thing to just lock your hands, step over into half guard and then pass from there. If I feel like I can't step over the leg, then I have to start either shelving a leg or I have to start yep. splitting the legs, or double splitting the legs. And if I feel like I absolutely can't pommel with a low hip method, then you have to go high tripod and get creative and pommel with the weightless legs to get to like, get a leg to the inside. Got it. Promise the last question. I have a lot of questions, okay. but promise the last question. So so when do you use the body lock? Is normally when they're a butterfly, when they're butterfly, I think it would be yeah. so, right? So normally I use uh, body locks whenever I'm encountering uh, a, a strong seated guard player. Okay. Um, right. So this is a great way, number one, to shot th to shut down Ashigurami specialists because yep. when you actually do lock a body lock, it's hard for guys to enter into your legs yep. and leg lock you or yep. sweep you. Um, and when a strong seated guard player is approaching me, that always gives me time to start hand fighting, create disconnection of the elbow from the body, and then dive into body locks. Right. And then this, what eventually this does is it puts guys on their back. They say, okay. I'm not going to stay seated anymore because the body lock danger is, is so prevalent that they go down to a supine guard on their back, and that gives you the ability to put outside flanking pressure with Toriandos and other high-stepping right. series. Right. And then you put so much pressure on guys' supine that they say, I don't want to stay supine anymore, and as they go to sit up, you dive into a body lock. Right. So you play a dilemma between putting pressure with the body lock, negating movement, and then either using float passing where you split the legs and step a leg to the inside, or flanking passing with Toriandos right. and high steps, and you chain them all together and it makes yeah. it makes a lot of pressure. Yeah, super interesting. So the very first instruction that we ever made was about guard passing, no gear right, that you did yeah. for VG Fanatics. So now we're pretty much taking like one part of that instructional and going crazy deep on yeah. it. Yeah. Man, that's incredible. And we did we did like the whole passing system. We did uh, you know, we did Toriandos, we did the float passing, we did body locks, we did half guard passing. Uh, so now we have kind of the general idea of passing. And now we're doing one very specific study on one given area of that passing. I love it. No, and I love it because not everybody is you. Yeah. So I don't I don't think like uh, most of the people watching over there, they're good on all these areas. But maybe body lock is your area or maybe body lock is the area that you are trying to get good at it. So this is the instruction. So it's good, guys, it's gonna be at bjfanatics.com very soon. So by, maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So thanks so much, Gordon, it was Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.